man. Well, I just want to thank y'all for allowing me to come and share with y'all tonight. Welcome to Crossology Bible Study. Uh, Matt's not here tonight. He asked me if I could come share with y'all, and I just appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here. I think it's going to be a little different format tonight than, than what we're used to with, with Matt, you know, and, and the way he teaches things. I feel like the, the Lord laid a word on my heart, uh, a, a word of encouragement, um, just to share with y'all some things. Uh, I was just telling the guys just a minute ago, it seems like every time I talk to Matt about coming out this way, the, the enemy attacks me. He attacks me in my mind. I, I start struggling, and I see the sinfulness that's in my own heart. I see the sinfulness in my own life. And even the last time I came here, I stood up here and said the same thing that I'm about to say. That I, I said, Lord, how can I speak to people about you in the condition that I'm in? And I, and I find myself the same way here again today, feeling the same thing. Lord, how can I, can I speak to people about you, Lord? How can I serve you in, in the, the condition that I'm in? So I, I come today with hopefully a, a word of encouragement. Uh, it, it might be a little more preaching than teaching, but we'll just let the Holy Spirit have his way. And, and hopefully he will feel fit to use an unworthy vessel like myself. So we're, we're going to come out of Romans chapter 8 tonight, verse 28. But if we could real quick, let's pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for your son, Father, who you sent to, to shed his blood on Calvary, Lord God. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that we're in these last days, Father, where you're pouring out your spirit upon all flesh, Father. And you're teaching us the truth of your word, oh Lord God. Lord, you're not only telling us what to do, Father, but you're now teaching us how to do it, Lord God. And Lord, we ask that you would send your spirit in the midst of us tonight, Lord. Anoint me, Father God, to share your word and anoint the ears of your people, Father God, that they may hear, Lord, and that they may be encouraged in your word, Father. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I want to start off by saying that the devil is a liar. That's right. Amen. The enemy is a liar. Just like I told my sister outside, he cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. He wants to, to accuse you. The word in Revelations 12 and 10 said that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses you before God. But I want to tell you something else. He accuses you to yourself. He accuses you in your own conscience. He tries to tell you you're not worthy. We talked about this last time. We might as well throw that out the window. We know that's not the case. The Lord didn't reach down for us because we're worthy. Amen. He reached down because he is. Amen. Because he is. That's why. Because he is. He reached out for you, brother, because he is. He is love. He is mercy. He is kindness. He is this grace that we're learning so much about. The power to overcome these things. And I just want to encourage y'all tonight that the enemy is a liar. He will do everything in his power to frustrate you. When you fall, he will try to tell you how sinful you are. And, and I'm here to tell you that let's know this already and let's see these things that are inside of us and ask the Lord to do a work. Yes. Ask him to Take do a change. We understand this great message. It's, it's not the, the license to sin. It's not the license to do what we want. It's the power to overcome. Praise God. But at the same time, it's an understanding of that we are going to fall. We are going to make mistakes. We are going to falter. But he's still God. He's still our God. He's still your God, sister. He's still your God. It don't matter the mistakes, the failures of how flat you fall on your face. Get up. Yes. Get up and fight the fight. Fight the fight, brother. Just fight the fight. Hold on to the blood of Jesus, Amen. to the cross of Calvary. Hold on to his work and what he has done for you. I, and reading the book by a man named Watchman Nee here recently, and he was in the early 1900s and, and talking about this very subject, the blood of Jesus and the accuser of the brethren and, and how that the blood of Jesus was more for God than it was for us. It was more for God that he could look upon sinful man. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's for us. We need it. Without it, we're in a bad way. We're lost and we're undone. You see, but, but understand and trust in that blood and the power of that blood. And then before I start talking too much, let, let's read a few scriptures so I don't get accused of not using the Bible. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the, uh, the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 
Now let, let's stop real quick and let's understand this predestination because it's not the predestination that, that we like to think of sometimes and so many religions teach that, oh, well, God's going to do what he's going to do and some of us are, are, are going to be used and some of us are not and that's just how it's going to be so let's just go about our business and let it be what it's going to be. No, it, it's not the person that's predestinated. It's the plan of God. It's the, the plan of God, the plan that God has for each and every one of our lives. Oh, don't get me wrong. He knew that I'd be standing here today. He knew you'd be sitting here. He knew everything. He said he knows it from the beginning, from the end. He knows all things. He knows everything that's going to take place. But he never forces his hand. He never forces a person to choose or not to choose. So this predestination that we understand is, is the plan of God and, and how it's going to take place in our life and how it's going to affect us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called them, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Let me tell you, you're not guilty tonight. I want to tell you, I don't care what you did 10 minutes ago. I don't care what you do tomorrow. I don't care the mistakes you make. You're not guilty. Get up. Get up and hold on. It, listen, people, this is, a, this is a rough ride. You know, I, I, I'd like to say that I could stand back here and, and tell you that I don't struggle. And tell you that it's just a, a walk in the park and it's right there for you if you'll just do the things I do. But that's not true. That's not the case. I know in my life personally I struggle with things. I struggle day to day. Uh, and, and for some reason, sometimes that there's not much of a struggle. And, and things just seem to be all right. But other times there's struggles. Serious struggles. And, and I don't understand. And I, and, I, and I talked to Matt about this not too long. Before I even decided to come up here, I, I talked to him about this. And, and for some time I talked to Matt, and I would, and I and I remember one day in particular that I cried to him on the phone, and I, and I said, Matt, you know I don't understand because I know I know this word, I know what it says, I know the plan that God has, and I and I understand it, I believe it, I know it's right, this way of the cross, I know it's the right way, but Matt, I don't understand why I struggle with things, I don't understand why I continuously find myself face first getting back up wondering what went wrong I don't understand I, I just don't understand it and not too long ago we talked as I had came through these things on the on the victory side amen on the Jordan side of these things right. I came through because of the grace of God and, and and I was talking to Matt on the phone and I said you know and he said you know Johnny said I'll be honest with you Matt I didn't know what to tell you because I knew that you you knew this message and I knew that you understood he said I, I was at a loss of words I didn't know what to tell you. But I want to tell you tonight that if you're going through something, I've got an answer for you. If there's something that's weighing you down and you don't understand why you're struggling with this thing and you keep trying to lay it aside and, and you keep picking it up and you keep trying to lay it aside and you keep picking it up and, and you don't know what's going on and you know this message and you understand it and, and, and you, you have a good concept of what the Lord wants to do in your life, I have something to tell you. Because this is what I told Matt the other day. Matt, just tell him, hold on. Just hold on. Just cling to Calvary and allow the Lord to do a work in your life. Because it's His work. He's doing this thing in you. Oh no, you know I'm not telling you to sit around and do nothing. But I'm telling you there's things in each and every one of us that need to be changed. There's things in each and every one of us that need to be pulled out. Now what the enemy wants to do, he wants to do just like he did in the garden. He wants to get you to stumble. And he wants to get you to falter. And when he does, he's going to accuse you. He's going to lie to you, and he's going to tell you that God don't want you no more. That you can never be what he wants you to be. You can never do what he wants you to do. And I'm here to tell you, let's just, you can't do it, but he can. He can do it in you. I, I, I know this without a doubt, that there's a work that he can do inside of us. I don't understand it all. I don't have all the answers. But I want to tell you, if you don't quit, if you don't quit, if you keep believing, if you keep trusting that what he did for you is enough, He's going to do that work. Amen. Oh, it might be slow. It will be painful. There's going to be some failures. There's going to be some struggle. There's going to be some battles. But fight the fight of faith. Amen. Don't let the enemy drag you away. Because what he's going to do, he's going to try to make you high. He's going to do the same thing. He, he, you're going to be just like Adam and Eve. You're going to be hiding. You're going to hide. Your, find yourself hiding in the wilderness. Hiding from God. And the whole while, he's looking at you, knowing where you're at. And he's just calling you back. Just saying, come back, son. Come back, Lord. Just like the prodigal son, 
when he came back to his father, all jacked up and all covered in the muck. The whole time, he could have came back any time. But his guilt, his pride, his own conscience kept him hiding. I, I, I'm telling you, I don't care what you've done. I don't, I don't care what you're struggling in. I, I don't care how you falter and how you fail. Don't hide from the Lord. Because the truth of the matter is the only one you're hiding from is yourself. We can't hide from it, people. We can't hide from it. He sees all things. He knows all things. The mistake you're going to make next week, because let's... It's coming. Let's just get it over with. It's coming. The mistake you're going to make all next week, he knew about it. He knew about it. Amen. Before the found, I mean, this is so beautiful, this thing that God has done. How, how before the foundation of the earth, the world said that Jesus was slain as a lamb. Before, the, before anything was laid and set in place. And I have to think it had to do with God's foreknowledge of sinful man, how they would fall. How they would fall and they would falter and they would need a redeemer. Amen? Amen. They would need a redeemer. So if before the foundations of the world, this God set forth his son to be crucified for you some eternity ago. Because I don't know how long. It's been an eternity. But before the foundations of the world. I mean, according to science, this world is millions of years old. You know, I mean, that's according to some of the studies. I don't know if that's the case. But I have a feeling that God was here before just a few thousand years. So, so before the foundation of the, of the earth, brother, he set his son up to die for us sinful man. And I want to tell you, if he did it before the foundation of the earth, and it was good then, if it was good before the cross ever took place, I want you to know it's still good today, and it's still good tomorrow, and it's going to be good for eternity. It's going to be good for eternity, people. Hold on. Hold on. Don't let that lying, stealing, cheating devil deceive you and steal your pride from you. Let me tell you about your pride. I'm not talking about heaven because that's going to happen. That's just it is what it is. I'm talking about the prize of being conformed into the image of Christ. Our desire, I, I, I cry, and, and I cry out to the Lord for his righteousness. For his righteousness to flow through me that, that I may walk just a little bit like he walked. That I may talk just a little bit like he talked. You see, the world's inundated with wanton things. The gospel preachers out there today, the more you have, I mean, we know Matt talks about it all the time. I know you, you people see it. You hear it. You can hear it when it comes out of people's mouths, how they want more of this and they want more of that. And, and it, it saddens me because when the Lord's working in you, the desire that should be coming forth is righteousness. A desire for righteous living. It, 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 it breaks me. I was broken last night in church as I praised the Lord and my sinfulness broke me and I, and I fell before the Lord in tears and, and I said, Lord, I'm undone. I'm all messed up, Lord. Lord, do something in me, Lord. Do a work in my heart, Lord. Change my life. And But the, the thing of it is, people, and, and I'm going to say this over and over and over, I don't, I don't care. The, the sinfulness, it's got to go. It's got to go, and he's going to work it out of us. He's going to do a work. But if you quit, if you quit, if you hide, if you run away, if you hide from him, he's not going to force his hand on you. He's going to let you have it. Oh, you might not want it right now. And it might just be overtaking you because you don't know exactly how to walk this walk. But if you hide from him, he's going to let it overtake you more and more. And more. So people, I want to encourage you tonight, don't hide. Don't hide from the Lord. Let him do a work in your life. Understand that, that there's a work that needs to be done. And, it, and it's his job to do it. He says we are his creation. In Christ Jesus. Created unto good works. That he has beforehand prepared for us. Amen. He's doing a work in you people. And I want to encourage you tonight, brother. No matter what goes on. No matter the struggles. And the mistakes and how many times you fall down and bust your face in the dirt, spiritually speaking. Get up. Get up. And, and, and another thing, we ought to be there to help each other get up. Amen? We ought to be sticking that right hand out and saying, get up, brother. I'm here for you. I, I, I'm here to help you. I, I want to lift you up. But we, we can't beat each other up, people. We need to uphold each other and love one another and, and encourage each other in these in these words of the gospel. Yes. What, is, what does the word say? Seven times seventy? If, if, if he sins against you seven times 70, 
in a day. Wow, what the, the love of the Lord. You know, and, and we know the, the type of people we're talking about. People who have a heart for the Lord. That you can see the desire, sister, like I see in you right now. That wants to live for the Lord. That wants to do the right thing. But yet we find ourselves falling over and over and over again. Help one another up, people. Don't, don't become self-righteous. Don't, don't act like you don't struggle with these things. Don't, don't act like they, they're, there's things in your life that's, that's everything is just fine. Because we, we all know the truth of the matter. Let's go back to the scripture for a moment. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Who can be against us? He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Delivered him up for you. For you, for you, for you, for each and every one of you. YouTube land, every, every one of you. He delivered his son up for you. I don't care what you did today. I don't care what you've done. He delivered him up for you that he may set you free from the bondage of sin and give you power to overcome. Amen. Amen. He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us all things. I'm telling you, you ain't got to earn the grace of God tonight. As a matter of fact, you can't earn it. You go about trying to earn it and it will be considered a debt. It will be considered a debt. And, and you will never get what you're working for. As a matter of fact, you'll get the opposite. You'll get more bondage. And you'll get more works. And, and, and what's going to end up happening is you'll probably get more self-righteous as time goes on. And you won't be able to see your, your faults because you'll be blinded in your religion. You'll be blinded in your activities. And, and, and you'll never see what it is the Lord wants to do. Now, now, this is the, a couple of verses coming up that I really wanted to stress tonight, that I really wanted to, to share with y'all tonight. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God who justifies. I want to tell you tonight, it's God who says you're not guilty. It's not man. It's not Satan. It's not no preacher standing behind a pulpit telling you about, oh, you need to do this and that. It's God who justifies you. It's God who says you're not guilty. It's God who did this. Understand that it's not the enemy. It's not your conscience who, who tries to make you hide from the Lord. But it's God. You're justified tonight. You're not guilty. You're free of all charges. We're free people. We're free. We're not guilty. We, we don't have to be held down by these things anymore. That daily, this is a battle daily in our lives. Let's understand that and let's be real. Daily in our lives. We find ourselves being condemned by our own conscience. We, we find ourselves being condemned by our own failures, by our own faults. Uh, me, if not and, and more than any of you, I know personally, daily I struggle with this condemnation. And I can sit there and repeat Romans 8 all I want. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Daily. By the minute I can repeat that to myself, and yet still I find myself suffering this condemnation, suffering this guilt. But I'm starting to understand, brother, that, that this, this condemnation that I'm suffering is coming because I, I'm, I still keep taking my eyes off of him. I still keep trusting in self a little bit. You see, I'm not trusting in the blood. I, I'm not totally believing that this is enough yet. Oh, I don't say it all the time, and I won't, I won't admit it, and I don't see it all the time, but that's what's going on. We don't realize how powerful people this blood is. We just don't realize how powerful the blood of this man, Christ Jesus, is. We don't realize what it does, what it's capable of, and, and just what it's for. Amen? We, we don't understand it. And, and it's, it's, it's a, I hate to say it, but in the modern church, it's a subject that has been pretty much pushed aside. Oh, oh, yeah, there's the ones that still, they needed to get saved. But as far as learning and understanding and growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ Jesus and what his sacrifice at Calvary means for you, how free you are, how justified you are, how declared righteous you are. I mean, you can't get no more righteous. You can't get no more free of the guilt that tries to weigh you down. 
Listen, this is freedom, people. This, this is freedom from the power of sin. This is freedom from the power of your mind to drag you down and to destroy you. And most of all, it's freedom from the enemy and his false accusations that he's going to throw our way constantly. I, I, I'm telling you, the more I learn and the more I grow and the more I understand, the more free I realize I am. Oh, I see sinfulness in me, people. We're going to always see that in us. But let, let me let you understand something real quick, and you probably already know this. When we see that sinfulness, when we're aware of that sinfulness, let the Lord break you over. Let His Spirit deal with you. Don't become hard-hearted. Don't act like it's not there. Don't try to hide it with the things you do. Don't, don't try to hide it from yourself, because that's really who you're hiding from. Oh, it, it, when it all boils down to it, it don't matter what they see. It don't matter what you see about me. It matters what he sees. And he sees it all. And, and what happens with religion is we get blinded. We get blinded to our own sinfulness. And, I'm, and I'm, we're going to go into a verse that I know all of you know too well here shortly. When we get blinded with all these things, these activities, this, this ritual, the routines. Oh, I, I go to, we talk, talk about this all the time, but I, I fear that it's so powerful. When, when you look this this world around and, and see how powerful it is, and I and I heard Brother Swagger make mention of this one time, and, and he said that the church today has come full circle, and today at this moment in time we're right back where Israel was when the Lord came. We're right back in that same place, and in Romans I can't remember what chapter it is. I, it's, it's later on in Romans that Paul makes the statement that. Israel, they had a zealousness for God, but it was ignorance. They did not submit to the plan of righteousness that God had for them in their life. So, so what, I wanna, what I want you to understand is the enemy tries to blind us and deceive us, and he uses our very flesh to do these things. Our faults, our failures, every time we make a mistake, he tries to use these things along with our mind and our knowledge of good and evil. You see, when, when Adam and Eve, whenever they bit of whatever they bit of, and they ran and hid like we talked about a minute ago. Their conscience was open. There came to them an understanding of knowledge of good and evil. It came to them a knowledge of what God thinks of as wrong and what he thinks of as okay. But the only problem is it was skewed. It was skewed by now the sinful nature that runs through their body. So when we look at things that are good, and I know we all know this, but let's talk about this for a minute. When we get caught up in these good things, we get caught up and they appeal to us. They appeal to our flesh, and at the same time, they hide our eyes. They hide our eyes to the fact that we can't do enough good. So you look around the world today and you see churches laden with people doing good. I, and I sat in a, a little church the other day, and I, I had lunch with some men and, and, this, and a pastor. And Lord, forgive me. But I'm going to share this. The pastor, he was talking about how his church, and I, I know this, I'm not making this up. I know some of y'all is going to think I'm making this up because I'm sure y'all heard it on, on, on uh, SBN or whatnot. But as I'm sitting there, this pastor, he says that they're going to go out to the schoolhouse in the evening time while all the cars are lined up, and they're going to hand bottles of water to the people, and they're going to do good deeds for them and show them goodness and if they ask they're going to tell them they're doing it to show the love of God and I thought to myself and I didn't say nothing because this was this man's church and I didn't feel maybe I should have said something I don't know maybe I was wrong Lord forgive me if I was but I thought inside of me what if they don't ask what if they don't ask but you see that's the religious appeal that's going on in the world today people don't be sucked in by it don't be sucked in by it. I, I've never seen, there's nothing, look, there's nothing wrong with giving people a drink of water. There's nothing wrong with it. But I've never seen the disciples or the apostles handing out water. They preached the gospel. They spread the good news. They shared the good news of Christ and Him crucified. And, and for any of you churches out there, if that's what y'all doing, if that's all y'all doing is handing out water, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it, and that's all I can say. And I, and I went there because I, of this talk of religiosity. 
Don't let religiosity blind you from the things of God. Don't let condemnation kill you and push you to the side. And at the same time, don't be too self-righteous and religious to allow the Lord to show you what's in your life. He's not showing it to you to condemn you. He's showing it to you to free you. He's showing it to you to take it out of your life. He wants to remove it, but he can't remove it if you don't know it's there, people. He couldn't deal with me about these things if I didn't acknowledge that they're there. Oh, they hurt for me to acknowledge. They're going to hurt, sister. It's going to hurt. Brother, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt when you fall. We all know that. We've all fallen. How many times this week or, or last week? It's going to hurt. But if you don't quit and you don't give up and you hold on, and you keep pressing forward, and you keep believing that what he did for you was enough, not only for forgiveness, but your sanctification, your day-to-day -day living, I'm telling you, there's some changes that's going to take place in your life. But just don't let the enemy steal it from you. Amen? Amen. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. Yea, rather, who is risen again? Who is even at the right hand of God? who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? There ain't but one person in this world that can ever separate me from what my Savior did for me. And that's me. That's me. There's only one. Only you, brother, can separate you. Only you, sister, can allow the enemy to lie to you. And tell you the high that you're not worthy. That's it. That's it. The enemy can't do it unless we let him. There's no person out there. Oh, I, listen, I know it hurts. I know sometimes we look at things and we don't think we're ever going to change. We don't think the sinfulness will ever be removed. There's things in my life that I cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't understand why I keep dealing with this over and over and over. I feel like I sometimes I live... In, in this Romans chapter 7. Sometimes I feel like this is my life. I think I'm out of it and then I'm right back there again. I think I'm out and I'm right back there again. I, I get confused and I don't understand things. But this one thing I do know. This one thing I do know that I'm going to press forward. That's right. I'm going to continue to press forward and I'm going to look to Christ. I'm going to look to his blood and I'm going to mm -hmm. know that it's enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to falter. I'm going to fail. And I would hope that y'all would pick me up if y'all see me laying down. Amen. Don't go around me on the side of the road, Christians. Don't go around me. Pick me up and tell me what he did is enough. And just tell me to keep going. That's the only answer I got for y'all. That's the only thing that's held on to me for this last four years is knowing that what he did was enough. For so many years, I, I, I thought that it was something that I had to do. I thought that I couldn't walk this walk because I wasn't good enough. And now I realize the only way you can walk this walk is if you're not good enough. The only way you can do this yeah. thing, if you realize you're not good enough, but he is. That's the only way this is going to work. It has to be total dependence. Jesus lifted that little child up and he said, this is it. As a little child. As a little child. And a lot of people want to use that analogy and, and think of it, oh, because the little child's humble and he's meek. And maybe that has something to do with it. But you know what it is about a little child? They're totally 100% dependent on the one that feeds them. They're totally dependent and they trust fully in the one that takes care of them. They don't look to their self. When they need something to eat, they run. You know, you have a little boy with Mama, I need something. Give me something to eat. I know I got three of them. One of them that eats like a horse. Yeah, that's it. Total dependence. He's totally dependent on you, sister. Those three kids I have, they're totally dependent on And every one of us that have children, they're totally dependent on us to take care of them. To provide for them. Unfortunately, there are people each and every day. And, and, and I remember when, when the Lord revealed some things to me about the Trinity and about the Godhead and, and the family atmosphere. And, and how the family was supposed to be a type of what the Lord has in his family. How the family was supposed to be a type of that. Oh, we, we fall short. So short. But I want you to think of this, people. That each and every night... There are families where little girls and little boys, they hide in their room. And, and they lay under the covers because they don't know what the one that's supposed to love them is going to do. They don't know who's going to hurt them. They don't know what's going to take place. 
And I want you to think about that for a minute. They, 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 they're not settled in their family. They're not settled in the one that's supposed to love them. The world is riddled with sin. As I stand here, someone is being hurt right now. Someone's not being loved like they should be loved. And the same thing goes with this world out here. They're running around like lost children without a parent. They're looking for food. They're looking for shelter. They're looking for someone to feed them. They're looking for something. Oh, they don't know it. Just like I didn't know it. Just like you didn't know it. And, and none of us knew it until the day that, that the Lord was able to draw us in. Yeah. And, and He was able to say, I want to be your parent. Yeah. I want to be that one that, that feeds you and provides for you and loves you and takes care of you. I want to be that one. Amen. That, that's what He wants. He wants to be that one world. He wants to be that for you. He wants to be that for each and every one of us. And, and I want you to know He wants to feed you. He wants to clothe you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to change you from the inside out. He wants to do a work in you that only He can do. He wants to share some things with you about His Son that only He can share. And, and let's make that clear about His Son. Because when He speaks to you, it's going to be about His Son. When He shares a word with you, it's going to be about His Son. And how what He did for you will affect your life. If it's not that, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will point you to me. He'll point you to me. Let me tell you something. Any, any revelation you think you're getting, if it's not the Spirit of God pointing you to something that the Word reveals about Jesus and how this will affect in your life, you need to push that Spirit to the side. Be careful today, people, because there's many false spirits going out amongst us. Oh, they'll point you to a Jesus, all right, but it'll be a wrong Jesus. It'll be something different. Let's, let's get back. So there's people throughout this world that are struggling right now without a parent. They, they, they're looking to the sinfulness. They're looking to, we know, alcohol, drugs, sex, all these things. But I'm here to tell you tonight, Christian, if you're born again, if you're born again, if you are the seed of Christ, the Word says that I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Now, now let's pay attention to a key word. Nor His seed begging for bread. His seed. I want you to understand that now. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor His seed. You see, there's only one righteous people. There's only one righteous. His name is Jesus. He's the Messiah. And when you understand this passage, and you see where you are in this place, He's the righteous one, and you're His seed. You're His seed. You're the seed of Christ when God baptized you, like Romans 6 says, into Christ, and you became implanted into Him, and you now become His seed. Become His seed that He will bring forth, that He will produce, that He will do a work in you. You're His seed. You're a child of God. You're heirs with Christ. Join heirs with Christ. You're a child of God. And I want to tell you that your Heavenly Father, He's going to take care of you. He ain't going to kick you to the side when you fail. Sister, will you throw your child out the door when he messes up? When he makes you angry, do you kick him out? When he does wrong against you, do you, do you just not want to love him no more? Not at all. The Word says how much more if we yeah. as wicked parents will give our child the good things right, that he asked for. How much more will the Lord not give us a serpent when we ask for bread? Amen? Oh, it's going to seem like he's quiet sometimes, people. Like he don't hear us. Like he's a million miles away. I've been begging for the Lord to speak to me for a year now. To give me a word like he did at one time. To speak things to me like he did at one time. I don't know how he speaks to you, but I know how he's spoken to me. And it scares me when I go so long and I don't hear something from him. But I know this one thing. That this right here is the word of God. And his word says he will never leave me nor forsake me. And he might be quiet right now. And he might not be talking, but I know he's there. I know he's there. I don't care how many times you fail tonight, people. I want to tell you that you're not forsaken. If he's forsaken you, we might as well throw this thing away. If you still love him and you want to serve him and you keep messing up and yet he's forsaken you, we might as well throw this thing away because we, we can't believe nothing that's out of Your conscience, the enemy, the preacher, your brothers and sisters, they might, might, they might want to make you think that he's forsaken you. But I just want to assure you that he hasn't. I want to assure you to not quit. Don't let go. 
Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. 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 Hold on. Don't quit. Don't give up. Let's finish this. Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. How much more of a promise can you get, people? How much more can, can the Lord tell us how much He loves us? How much more can He express His love to us? All in His Son, Christ Jesus. Thank you, Paul. He died for us, people. Yes. He shed His blood for us. Not that we can say, okay, Lord, I accept it. Let me be super righteous for you. No, that so He can have access to us. So He could fellowship with us. Even when us as wicked man didn't want fellowship with Him. He wanted fellowship with us. He sought us out. The Word said that no man comes to the Son except the Father draws Him. In our sinfulness. In our misdeeds. In, our, in our, all of our wrong acts and the things we've done. And I know the things I've done. I don't know about all of you but I know the things I've done. And there's plenty of bad things. I'll be honest there's a lot of things that like I said in the last message I preached in my church, that if I could bury them and keep them hidden from all man for all eternity, it would not hurt my feelings. Because I've done some evil things. I've done some things that I'm very ashamed of. And I'm sure, I'm willing to say that each and every one of us have. I'm just, I'm going to be honest, I'm willing to say that each and every one of us have. You know, and I just thank God that in that sinfulness, he sought me out. He sought me out and He called me in. And in doing that, He showed me that not only did He love me then, when I was in all that, He loves me now that I'm in His Son. And I'm hidden in Him. I'm hidden in that temple. You're standing in the temple of God each and every day, people. I want you to know that. Each and every day when you're standing in Christ and when you're trusting in His work for you, you're in constant fellowship with the Lord. Oh, you might not feel like it. It might not seem like it. And you might not understand the things that's going on. But if you trust in what He says and you believe in His work for you, there's nothing, nothing, sister, that can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. No creature, no power, no principality. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And I believe that with all my heart. I believe that. And I want, I want to share one more little verse. We don't even have to turn there. And I, and I know we we all know this already. I had a few more verses that I want to share, but we, we're kind of running out of time. Let me, let me see if we can. Though. First John 5. First John 1, 5 through 10. Because I want, I want to just hit this real quick so we understand what we're facing. And that the Lord, when, when, when He had His Scriptures penned, he knew and understood what man was and what we would face. 1 John 1, 5-10 This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Let's make that clear real quick because I used to read that and think that that said, if you say you have fellowship with the Lord, and yet you sin, you make mistakes, you're not walking in the truth. Okay? And then that kind of heaped some condemnation on me because I didn't understand what the Word was saying. But if you go down a little bit, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So what's this that 
that the apostle was saying. What's he talking about? I thought if I was in the light, there would be no darkness. What he's saying is when you're in the light, it's going to reveal your darkness. It's going to reveal the darkness that's in you. It's not saying you're not going to mess up. Oh, John says you're going to. If you say you have no sin, you're a liar already. And the, and the light's not in you because it's not exposing the fact that there's sin in you. Okay? So, so if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. There's no light in you because if it was in you, it would expose the fact that you're sinful and that you have sin. Okay? So understand when you read verses like that, it's not saying you're not going to mess up, that you're not going to make mistakes, and that when you do, you're not in Christ. No, as a matter of fact, this says the exact opposite. It says that when you mess up, when you make mistakes, when you falter, you're going to see it. And it's going to hurt you. And, and you're going to fall before the Lord. And, and you're going to cry out for forgiveness. You're going to cry out to Him because it hurts you. It hurts the very nature, that divine nature that was placed inside you. It hurts you. It hurts you that you that you have sinned against the one that you love. <coughs> Amen. So, so don't let verses like this mix us up and, and, and make us think that there are people out there that are perfect. And as a matter of fact, when you come across the one that try to tell you they're perfect, well, now we can maybe explain this a little better and say, no, you're not. You're just a fool and you need Jesus. If you get saved, you'll see how messed up you are. Jesus said that he came for the unrighteous, not the righteous. There's a million people out there today sitting in churches that don't realize they're unrighteous. They've never beat the breast and, and said, Lord, a sinful man I am, Lord, forgive me. They, they, they've never realized how down and out they are. they never realized how messed up they are. And I'm telling you tonight, if you've, if you've never come to a place that you've realized how sinful you are and the fact that you're in need of a Savior, oh, you could be in church for 50 years. But if that's never been you, and if that's not you from time to time, there's a problem. There's a problem in your walk. There's a problem with your relationship with God. If you never find yourself crying out and undone before the Lord, oh, I'm not talking about because you committed some big sin. I'm just talking about because you realize how undone you are yes. before the Lord. You realize how unworthy you are to ever be in His presence. His light will expose the darkness that's in us. It exposes the sin that's inside of our very hearts. And we confess it, and He's faithful to forgive it. Amen? Confess it and he will forgive. And in saying that, I'm going to share one more thing with y'all. We don't even have to turn there. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. Hold on to that. Hold on to that tonight. You are complete in him. I don't care how many mistakes you make, how much you see yourself as incomplete. The Lord see you. He sees you as finished. He sees you as done. Submit your life to the Lord. Allow Him to do a work in you. First and foremost, allow Him to conform you into the image of His Son. And as you seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these other things, they'll be added to you. Oh, He's going to reveal where He wants you to be. He's going to show you what He wants from you. But first, seek Him, His righteousness. Seek after that for that to flow through you. And, and all these things, they'll fall into place. They'll be added to you. I'm, don't quit tonight, people. Don't quit. Don't quit. Hold on to the cross. Hold on to the blood. And, and keep knowing it's enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's all I got for y'all tonight. Amen. Good job.